Hello and welcome to the Backline Report. Every week, Fred Alvader and I check in on the world of golf to bring you the latest news, insights, analysis, interviews, recaps, previews, and we cover anything and everything golf. In other words, if it happened in golf, we have it for you. Fred, we have a great week today. We have an amazing invite here that I can't wait to talk to him. So how are you today? Hey, I'm fantastic, Carlos. Uh, you know, here in Michigan, it's wonderful today. We got about two inches of snow, so it's uh, it's great. You know? <laughs> it's wonderful up here. But no, we're really excited to have Jim Nugent with us. And uh, so why don't you go ahead and bring him in, Carlos? Yes, we do. And for those of you who don't know, Jim Nugent is the founder and publisher of Global Golf Post. He has worked in golf media for more than a quarter century, and he's a frequent guest on Golf Channel and numerous golf talk sh radio shows across the country. And we're happy and privileged to have him here with us. We have some questions for him. So, Jim, welcome to the show. How are you today? I'm well, and thank you for having me on today. And we woke up to some snow here, too, in Chicago. So uh, spring seems a long way away. <laughs> who knew? Who knew? Hey, Fred, uh, we want to talk about uh, an article that Jim published about uh, the, uh, a subject that we have been talking about for almost 18 months already. But this is something that has been brewing on. And uh, let's talk about the LIV investments and that great article that Jim published. Yeah, and today's Global Golf Post, uh, Jim uh, posted an article that uh, basically said that uh, uh, Greg Norman should be fired by the LIV Investment Group uh, because he hasn't delivered on his promises of bringing big names into their series. And, and Jim, uh, you mentioned various points in there, but one that caught my eye was that uh, Augusta National, where we just recently had the Masters, may have played kind of a key role in Greg Norman losing maybe like Dustin Johnson and maybe a Bryson DeChambeau. Is that, is that correct? I, I suggested that um, it's, it's speculation, to be honest with you. Um, I'd like to think it's informed speculation on our part. Um, the club has never spoken to the Dustin Johnson, Bryson DeChambeau situation, but there's enough conversation out there uh, in the game, so to speak, that suggests that, uh, uh, at the last moment, uh, Dustin Johnson checked in with Augusta National before he was to sign on the dotted line with LIV and was told that uh, maybe that's not such a good idea, that there's no guarantees in life. And, and as I point out in the piece that I wrote today at Global Golf Post, Augusta National is an entity onto its own. It makes its own rules and regulations. It is an invitational tournament. There's a lot of tradition. The past uh, past winners are, are exempt for the rest of their lives, but that's not written in stone anywhere. And one day, if Dustin Johnson had made the decision to go and, and play for LIV, he might uh, not get his invitation to, to return to Augusta National. But again, speculation, hopefully informed speculation. Yeah, yeah. You kind of wonder how these things work sometimes. And, and uh and another thing I found really interesting in the article was that uh, you mentioned the fact that now that maybe, you know, he doesn't have a lot of top names coming in to play in these tournaments, he's maybe looking to top amateur talent in colleges and with the name, image and likeness money being able to be accepted by co collegiate players, there might be a way for him to slide some money to them to get them to come and play in some of those tournaments. That was a startling development that popped up uh, last week when the LIV people acknowledged that they were contemplating thinking about uh, uh, bringing some of our, our top collegiates uh, into to play in their events because they can now and do so in a way that I don't believe anybody really contemplated when they uh, at the USGA or the RNA when they revised the, the rules of amateur status. Uh, the Saudis could do name, image, and likeness deals that could pay a college kid, what, $100,000 to come and play in their events just to help get this thing started. Uh, I think that most of your listeners and most of our readers would think that $100,000 to a college kid is clearly a violation of what we believe the spirit of, of, of amateur golf. But now in the NIL era, era anything's possible. I'm told that there's a gymnast, uh, a female gymnast at Auburn who, because of her social media following, is making a half million dollars a year on NIL deals. So uh, I don't recognize this world that we live in anymore. Yeah, some of the football deals that are, that are floating around are, are unbelievable. Carlos, you had, a, you had a question you wanted to ask Jim. 
Yes, uh, we have talked, I mean, everybody has talked about the Phil Mickelson not being at the, ma at the Masters. And you mentioned at the top of the, the questioning about Dustin Johnson possibly checking in with Augusta National before making a decision. So do you have a sense going there, maybe Phil did this on his own? It has been rumored that maybe he was enticed not to do it, to, hey, take take the this season off and don't be there. I mean, uh, Fred Ridley is on record to say, hey, we invited him. He took his own decision and it's out of here. What's your take on that? I take Chairman Ridley at his word. He's an honorable man. Uh, I don't think he would say something that is is uh, not true. Um, how Phil got to this decision, I don't know. But the reality is that uh, as much as I'm willing to accept uh, Chairman Ridley uh, for his word, a lot of others are not going to. And some of the people that I refer to are tour players who are going to infer from the situation that Augusta National told them to stay home. And if they can tell Phil to stay home, they can tell me to do the same. And so uh, I, again, I accept uh, Chairman Ridley's word. I believe him to be an honorable and honest man, but I don't think all the players necessarily agree with that assessment. And I think that most people believe that he was told to stay home this year. Jim, to kind of wrap this thing up a little bit, you, uh, you in the article, you say, well, Greg, uh, you know, if he was a baseball manager, he's he's like, oh, and 15 here. So he probably ought to be fired. Uh, and uh, so if LIV Investment Group decides to maybe do that because he hasn't brought in the talent, he hasn't delivered on what he promised. He hasn't been able to bring a top name talent to their their series. Um, where does LIV Investment Group go from here? You You had a couple names or a name that you thought might be a good choice to lead us up and maybe help bring together a meeting of the minds with the DP World Tour and maybe the PGA Tour. Well, going back to my earlier comment uh, about walking the, the grounds with uh, Scott Seymour uh, last summer, I believe that there's a way for LIV to coexist in what we call the, the golf ecosystem, the current status quo. Again, if you're gonna bring a couple hundred million dollars to golf, uh, golf should listen and there's a way to do it. Norman is the wrong man at the wrong time to make that happen. Uh, coincidentally, or perhaps not so coincidentally, uh, LIV hired a, a guy by the name of Sean Bratches, uh, an extraordinarily successful global sports marketing executive, a long time at ESPN, rose to number two or number three in the ranks of ESPN, then went off and became the managing director of Formula One, and did a wonderful job of bringing Formula One into the modern age. And he now is the chief commercial officer or some such title at uh, LIV. The reality is as a global business executive, he is far more qualified to lead and build an organization like LIV than Greg Norman ever would be. Jim, thank you so much. Uh, Carlos, you have anything else for uh, Jim before we let him go? I think it's been very informative. We loved your your article, and I think you hit it right on the nail. And uh, Fred and I were talking about this before. Anywhere else, the leader of a group like this just doesn't produce, hey, we got to move on. So uh, maybe that's what's going to happen. Like you, I think there should be a coexistence between this. We can only grow, and competition can only bring the best things out for golf, which is what we all want. But thank you for your time. And uh, if there's anything else you want to add before we close. No, thank you very much for, for having me on. I would encourage your listeners to, to read what I wrote today. It's at globalgolfpost.com, our digital magazine. It's a cover story. And I think that uh, your listeners will find it to be uh, provocative, if nothing else. Well, Always great that. information, Global Golf Post, Jim. We love reading it. Thanks so much. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you, Jamie. And thank you for everybody to listening to us. We're going to post that link down in the information as long as for you to, to subscribe to us. Thank you for joining us and have a great week.